This lecture video is for a special topics undergraduate course in the spring semester of 2023, but it can be used in any course where air conditioning design is involved. It is intended to give a very high level description of the air conditioning problem. In this case, we only consider space cooling. We describe an energy balance model of the space cooling problem, the relevant psychometrics terminology, including the condition line and the coil refrigeration line, the radiant time series method for heat gain and cooling load calculations. The contents involved in this lecture usually requires about eight to 10 weeks to cover in a semester long course. For a student to be able to carry out the calculations and adequately understand the concepts and methods significant additional effort is needed. However, this lecture should serve as a useful guide in that effort. The learning objectives are as follows. We will establish a basic engineering model of, of air conditioning. We'll have a list of design parameters and we'll be able to calculate the cooling load for a cyclic or cyclic 24 hour period using an Excel spreadsheet. And the methods for sizing the cooling equipment is not included in this lecture. Student deliverables are, uh, in, are as follows. Um, the students should be able to develop a parameter list for the air conditioning system, should be able to determine the values of the parameters, and there should be complete cooling load and coil refrigeration load calculations. So the air conditioning problem. Without the air conditioning, especially in the hot summer months, the air temperature inside a building or a shelter can increase to a level that uh, is hazardous to productivity, human health, or equipment safety. Now, when we focus on air conditioning, when we focus on air conditioning for the human occupancy scenario, it should uh, provide thermal comfort and adequate air quality. The underlying engineering science for air conditioning design and analysis is psychrometrics, which is the study of moist air. Now we're going to use the radiant time series method for cooling load calculation. In the ideal case, the air conditioning system would uh, remove an energy from the conditioned space. That's the space where air conditioning is provided. The air conditioning system should uh, remove the energy, energy from the conditioned space at a rate that is equal to the cooling load. Now note that the cooling load is the time is time dependent. So the ideal air conditioning system should be able to track a time dependent rate of energy re, re, uh, energy re removal this practically is not possible now to provide the space cooling the air conditioning system causes a airflow through the conditioned space i.e the space to be air conditioned out of the inlet the air is cool and dry this is called the supply air as the air flows through the conditioned space, it gets warmer and uh, more humid as heat is transferred from the various surfaces into the air and water vapor from, the certain, from certain sources is added to the flowing air. The air leaves the conditioned space with a higher energy content when it's, uh, that's why uh, this is where, when it is called uh, the return air. The heat that needs to be carried away by the airflow, which is referred to as heat gain, um, co comes from several sources. It can be from it comes from solar radiation, from the sun. Now this requ uh, this includes direct radiation, diffuse radiation, and reflected radiation. And the solar heat gain can come through different parts of the building. It can be transmitted through the walls, the opaque surfaces of the building. And to account for that heat transfer, we use a method that defines the outside surface temperature, 
of the building, which is called the soil air temperature. And this is calculated for each wall, each opaque surface. Now due to the thermal mass of the walls, the heat transfer from the solar radiation through the walls, it's, this is an unsteady heat transfer problem. It's an unsteady heat conduction problem. So we use something called the periodic response factor to account for that. So not only the the solar radiation on the walls outside surface is time dependent, but also due to the unsteady na nature of uh, this heat conduction, the heat is transmitted through the walls, not instantaneously, but with some time delay. Now solar radiation can also transmit through windows and other transparent surfaces. These are called uh, fenestrations. A solar heat gain coefficient, or SHGC, is usually used for each transparent surface for this purpose. Now, internal heat gains must also be considered. These include heat gains due to electrical appliances and human occupants. These heat gains are determined based on the energy dissipation rate of these sources. Infiltration is another source of heat gain because buildings are not airtight and the opening closing of doors allow outside air to come into the conditioned space. Since the outside air usually has greater energy content or enthalpy than the return air, this added energy content needs to be included as heat gain. The design conditions for air conditioning problem includes outside conditions, that's weather conditions including solar radiation, and the building's occupancy operating schedule. The zone air or the return air condition is a fixed condition selected by the designer. The designer needs to use these input conditions to determine the heat gains. The heat gains are further divided into radiative and convective as well as sensible and latent. Latent heat gain is always convective. The convective heat gain contributes to cooling load instantaneously. The radiative heat gain contributes to the cooling load through a, a radiant time ma uh, fa factor. The designer usually also needs to determine the ventilation rate, i.e. the flow rate of fresh air needed for the air conditioning system. This may become unnecessary for a small shelter that has high rate of infiltration. On this slide, the air conditioning problem is shown abstractly as a, as a moist air flowing through a control volume with energy both, sensi both sensible and latent being added to the control volume at a certain rate. That rate is the cooling load. The enthalpy of the moist air increases as it flows through the control volume. The process of air flowing through the conditioned space can be shown on a psychrometric chart. Here in this practice problem, you're given the supply air and the return air conditions and the air flow rate you can determine the sensible and latent portions of the cooling load from this information. Okay, so supply air condition uh, based on the dry bulb and temperature and humidity, we can already uh, identify it on the psychrometric chart, which is here. Now we draw a straight line through the supply air condition and we make sure that the line has a slope that corresponds to the sensible heat factor or SHF which is 0.8 in this problem. We also know that the return air is at 75 degrees Fahrenheit dry bulb temperature. So since the return air condition must be on a straight line of uh, SHF point, uh, point 0.8 
where that line crosses the vertical line of uh, 75 degrees is the return air condition. So that's the return air condition. From the location of the two points, we can find the enthalpy of uh, the supply air and the return air. With flow, uh, flow rate information, we can get the cooling load or the time rate of uh, heat removal from the conditioned space, both the sensible portion and the latent portion. In this case, 80% of the total cooling load is sensible heat and 20% is latent heat. The return air leaves the conditioned space and goes into the cooling equipment in which there is a coil and uh, there's a cold fluid flows in the coil. Heat transfer takes place to remove heat from the air. The cooling equipment cools the return air plus some fresh air to produce the supply air. The coil refrigeration load is usually greater than the cooling load because of the, the need to cool fresh air from the ambient environment. So here we look at the coil refrigeration load. Here we show the concept of this coil refrigeration load on a psychrometric chart. Now here point zero is the condition of the fresh air from the ambient environment. And point three is the condition of the return air from the uh, that's that comes from the conditioned space. The point two is the condition of the supply air. The line connecting two and three is the condition line as we described previously. Now some of the return air is exhausted into the ambient environment so as to allow fresh air to come into the system. Some of the return air is recirculated in the system. The proportion of a the proportion is a parameter for the air conditioning system design and the operation. It has to do with the ventilation rate. We will cover that on a later slide. Now after mixing the recirculating return air and the fresh air, the mixed air will have a condition um, that is uh, corresponding to a point somewhere on the line, on the line segment between point zero and point three. The cooling equipment's task is to bring the air from condition one, that's the mixed air, bring that air, uh, bring the condition uh, from point one to point two. Now this involves decreasing the air temperature and the humidity. Now this is the textbook we use for the course Mean 437 Principles of Building Energy Analysis from which I borrowed the, the information for this special topics course. Some of the examples we show in this presentation are from the textbook and we also use the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating and Air Conditioning Engineers or ASHRAE uh, handbooks and standards. The design of an air conditioning system would depend on, the, on both the outdoor design conditions and the, the indoor design conditions. So the outdoor design conditions the outdoor uh, condition is a periodic condition. Namely, it is a 24-hour cyclic scenario that repeats itself. Now, the indoor condition does not change with time, but the designer can choose to set the indoor temperature and humidity higher or lower based on the application. Now, information of the building, the shelter, uh, or the shelter's construction namely the composition of the walls, windows, etc. is also needed. Geographical information is needed for solar radiation uh, calculations. Here is some description of uh, the solar radiation calculation. Some reading and learning will be necessary to be able to carry out such calculation. In calculating solar heat gain through walls of a building, the solar air temperature is, new, is used and the heat gain through 
each surface is calculated by applying the periodic response factor to account for the unsteady heat conduction. The periodic response factor is a function of the wall's composition and dimensions and requires some complex computation. This is not required for the individual students to calculate. Uh, they can be, they, you may be able to find them um, uh, either through a computer program or uh, in some publications, textbooks. Here's some information. Now here's some information about getting the solar heat gain factor for the uh, the whole solar heat gain uh, coefficient for windows and skylights. Internal heat gains are calculated based on the what are present in the indoor environment, both occupants, lighting, other equipment. Infiltration heat gain depends on how leaky the building is and how often the doors are open and closed. Each heat gain needs to be classified into the proper category for the next step. It can be, there are two dimensions to divide them, to classify them. One dimension is whether it's sensible or latent. The other dimension is whether it's convective or radiative. And then in the radiant time series method, we calculate the, after calculating the, the hourly heat gain, we convert the heat gain into hourly cooling load. Now there's the, uh, the so-called radiant time factor that is to be applied in this step. Now usually in the air conditioning system, we need to determine the ventilation rate, which is the fresh air flow rate that's needed to provide the sufficient oxygen to the occupants. Now for a small shelter with a split body air conditioner where positive control of fresh air is not feasible, the calculation of ventilation rate may not be necessary for the air conditioning design purpose. Usually the infiltration rel is relatively high, which practically serves the ventilation purpose. Now, to recap, in an air conditioning design process, we find the cooling load based on the design weather condition, solar radiation, building construction, occupancy, and the operating schedule. Then we select a cooling and the air handling equipment. We, uh, we select the uh, cooling and the air handling equipment to fulfill the air conditioning purpose. Now, the specific methods for equipment selection is not covered here. So here's a checklist of methods, results, items in the project report. This is a checklist that I gave uh, for my mean 437 class, which may also be useful for students in this in another course. So here I give this checklist. 